Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, this episode of Bullet Points that we're doing today may be one of the most consequential and important bullet points we've ever done, because in looking at one of the opinion pieces that we were going to cover around the North Carolina law that was repealed to basically repeal the pistol permitting process, I found something that undermines the gun control narrative across the board from their own states and stud- or sites and studies. This is insane. Now, there's a few pieces of information which are going to be incredible for us to know but going forward for this article. The first one, there are nine states that require pistol permitting licensing requirements, right? Basically, you have to have a permit to buy a gun. That's the first step. There are 21 states that require state-level background checks. Now, this is going towards the universal background check system. Keep that in mind. Nine for pistol requirement for permitting, and then the other 21 for uh, state-level background checks or universal background checks. Listen to what they sacrificed to prove the point on the North Carolina bill. This is crazy. All right. Everything is linked in the description box below as usual. And I want to know what you guys think on this one. And honestly, share this because this is impactful. All right. So the opinion piece. An inappropriate attack on a life-saving North Carolina gun policy. Okay. Let's see what they have to say about that. Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson and Paul Vallone couldn't be more exploitive in pursuing a disingenuous campaign to undermine the state's life-saving pistol purchase permit law by calling it racist. Their efforts to use race baiting as a tool to repeal a key North Carolina public safety law are as dangerous as they are hypocritical. I'm not going to say what I'm saying or thinking, but I'm just going to let stare at the camera and let you guys figure out what I'm thinking. Okay. Moving on past that part, that was just the setup. Listen to what they do and how they lead me down these breadcrumbs. This is phenomenal. Firearm licensing systems, such as North Carolina's pistol purchase permitting system, are one of the most evidence-based policies to prevent gun violence. There is clear evidence that repealing this law would be dangerous and harmful change. Okay, then the author cited a study, and you guys know me, I went into the study and, whoa, the stuff that I found. So first of all, the study is rife with errors, in my opinion. I'm not going to go into it in detail on what they actually uncovered and their methodology. I've linked it below, but it's not the greatest. I'm going to be honest. But what they found in here and what they say, check this out. Keep in mind, universal background checks is the solution, and it'll save lives, right? This is from the study. Purchaser licensing point-of-sale background check laws and firearm homicide and suicide in four states through 1985 to 2017. All right. Check the, out the uh, objective. To estimate and compare the effects of state background check policies on firearm-related mortality in four states. It's pretty straightforward. Listen to the methodology. Annual data from 1985 to 2017 were used to examine Maryland and Pennsylvania, which implemented point-of-sale comprehensive background checks, CBC laws for handgun purchasing. CBC. Okay. Listen to what they said in the results. This is, what, this is not what the author was focusing on, but listen to what are in the results. There was no consistent relationship between CBC laws and mortality rates. This is the, auth- this is the study that Giffords.org, a major United States gun control group, is referencing to prove that pistol permitting laws work in nine states, while at the same time disproving 21 states of universal background check systems. It says right here in the same study that they cite... There was no consistent relationship between CBC laws and mortality rates. Then why do we do them? I tell you what, why don't we talk about those nine states that have pistol permitting laws, and we'll talk about that over here, but let's address these 21 that have a no consistent relationship on universal background check laws. Why aren't we talking about that, Giffords.org? What's up? I got another one for you. Wait till you hear the results. Conclusions. Purchaser licensing laws coupled with CBC requirements were consistently associated with lower firearm homicide and suicide rates, but CBC laws alone were not. So in the study that they're citing for universal background checks and pistol permitting, they're saying that those two things alone are the only thing in a faulty study that reduced gun violence. But CBC laws were not. Interesting. Public health implications. Our results contribute to a body of research showing that CBC laws are not associated with reductions in firearm-related deaths unless they are coupled with handgun purchasing licensing laws. So why do we have them in those 21 other states? Just a question. And that's the important piece. That's what I wanted to bring to you. This is impactful. 
if you are going to sit there and say from Giffords.org that this study proves that pistol permitting works and it's only in nine states, but state level background checks have no correlation whatsoever, then why in the 21 other states are there state level background checks? On behalf of the Second Amendment advocates across the United States, I would like to thank Giffords.org for putting this article out. That's what I've got for you today on the bullet points, guys. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you tonight at 9 p.m.